My name is Margaret McCain, and I want to talk to you about philanthropy. Philanthropy is defined as a love of humanity with action to promote and advance the well-being of one's community and society. Women have been a force in philanthropy as far back in history as there are records. The hearts and hands of women have created charities worldwide, and Canada is no exception. Canadian women have been the, a force behind the founding of multiple charities, shelters, schools, soup kitchens, aid organizations, and many more. The Child Development Institute in Toronto is a very success, successful, multifaceted agency serving children and families. It began in 1909 as the Crash Child and Family Service, founded by two Anglican women, Mary Benton and Gertrude Toll. It was a place where working women could leave their babies. Imagine this, a daycare in 1909, a time when the prevailing culture expected women to stay home and care for their babies. The crash eventually added a milk program, an employment program, and another to learn about the psychology of early childhood in 1909. What a vision. These two women were typical of the female philanthropists of their day, addressing an urgent need working hard to raise the money to provide the services. Women in their day, and up to the 21st century, did not have the earning power to generate their own wealth. They were dependent on generous husbands or on inherited wealth from their fathers or husbands. Rarely did husbands give their wives a voice in decisions about family philanthropy. Men made the money, and they decided where it would go. I was one of the fortunate few whose husbands gave their wives the checkbook. Sometimes, but rarely, women broke with the norm and were able to shape their own philanthropy. Helen LaKelly Hunt is an American woman who has had an enormous influence on Canadian women philanthropists. Her father was a silver magnate in Dallas, Texas. He is thought to be the prototype for Jock Ewing of the TV show Dallas. Helen and her sister led the typical Dallas life for wealthy women of her day. Luxury, unlimited bank accounts, frequent shopping trips to Neiman Marcus. She described her life this way. The king was in the counting house, counting out his money. The queen was in the parlor, eating bread and honey. But Helen and her sister didn't like honey, nor did they like the life that money gave them. So they took their share and left. Something more meaningful was, what was of interest to them. They, so they founded the Sisters Fund to support women's charities. And then they began an organization called Women Moving Millions to encourage women of means to act in support of women's needs. And this has had an enormous influence on women in Canada, including me. Although until recently, women have been dependent on a generous husband or inherited wealth, they have done amazing things. Why and how? Because women care. Margot Franson of The Body Shop Canada explains it this way. I put my heart in my checkbook, and my checkbook in my heart. And Margot has been a driving force in initiatives focused on family violence and the trafficking of women and girls. Carol Newell has been an inspiration to those of us who have inherited wealth. She has demonstrated how to handle it wisely. An American woman who fell in love with British Columbia, she chose to move there permanently. And when her mother died, she found herself with a lot of money. She didn't know how to handle it. She didn't really want, know what to do with it and didn't particularly want to. But she was very wise. She hired a very competent team who eventually helped her money grow to over $100 million. First, she established a foundation whose mission was solely on her passion to protect the environment and ecology of British Columbia. Then she added a venture capital company called Renewal Partners, whose mission mirrored that of her foundation. It was for social profit, not economic profit, and they have been leaders in Canada in social impact philanthropy. Sometimes, great things have been accomplished by women without money. And there are many examples in Canada, but I will name only one. The late June Colwood, noted author, journalist, founder of multiple charities and organizations to address evident societal needs. A few examples of her legacy, Nellie's, Canada's first women's shelter from abuse, Jessie's, a home to nurture pregnant teen moms, Casey House, a hospice, hospice for AIDS victims. I could name many more that she founded, 
June was an incredible woman and one of my heroes. In the latter decade of the 20th century and into this century, we see the changing landscape for women in philanthropy, and we are seeing the power that comes from their hearts. Women are emerging as philanthropic leaders, and the face of philanthropy more and more is the face of women. Ketchum Canada tells us that over the next 10 years, women will acquire an estimated $900 billion. By 2026, they are expected to control close to 48% of financial wealth. It is a proven fact that women are more generous than men and will donate a higher proportion of their assets to charity, especially to charities that work to alleviate poverty, health care, education, and organizations for women and girls. Women are, most, are more emotionally engaged in their causes and are driven more by impact on society. As women increasingly generate their own wealth and come into their very own, they will be a force to be reckoned with in shaping the landscape of giving. They are a growing force in philanthropy, and society should take note. So I've characterized women in philanthropy this way. I call it the five C's of the way women give. First, they care. Their hearts are engaged first by an evident societal need. Then they make a commitment. They want to do something to address the need. They learn about it, and they act. And then comes the check. It follows the caring and commitment. Then women collaborate, and they do this well. They bond together with like minds and like missions. Lastly, there is continuity, because when women engage, we never let go. So world, take note. Women are emerging as a driving force in addressing societal needs. We care and we will act.